What we're going to do today is learn how to install the no glitch flow switch. So you'll get it in a box that looks like this. You pop it open and everything that you need is in there. So what you're going to do when you're in the field, and I have taken the liberty to use a flow switch here in our studio, our home studio. <laughs> because it's I can do this easier here in my house than if I was standing out in the field in the hot sun with fire ants crawling up my leg. So what you're going to do first is you're going to make sure that your shuttle inside moves and as you rotate it you'll hear the sound of the freely moving red shuttle inside the flow switch. That's important because what you want to do is once you've finished gluing your pipe to the housing, it needs to sound just like that. Most of you already know this, but I'm going to go through a way that I used to install them. Now, <clears throat> everybody knows how to do a good PVC joint with cleaner, cleaner, cleaner then glue, glue, inserting the pipe. I'm obviously not using glue just because I don't want to mess up this housing. <laughs> so here we go. And what I would often do is I would glue my pipes to my housing as the very first step. As you can see, we're, we're using the three-quarter inch pipe, the three-quarter inch housing. So we're going to make our two joints into this PVC housing, and we're going to let it dry. So make these joints just like you would any other PVC joint. I've heard people say put a little tiny amount of glue on here and a little tiny, but that's a bad idea if you do that. You want to make this joint just like you do any other PVC joint and obviously wipe it off uh, to make it look neat but let it sit now you've glued up your pipe that you're going to use let it sit until it dries you come back 10-15 minutes later after you're working around your installation and this is the important noise you want to hear now as you can see that red shuttle inside the housing is moving freely. That means that your PVC joint has not overflowed into the inside of the shuttle housing, uh, excuse me, inside of the flow switch housing and caused that shuttle to be glued in place. This particular type of flow switch I would generally install at this being the last joint between uh, the piping and the filter. So in other words, this the filter itself would be in this location and I would just normally glue it right into there, into place in the back of the filter. Remember, in the instructions it tells you to keep this flow switch housing in between the retention tank and the filter. The reason for this is because your retention tank will take away all those metallic pieces that can cause the flow switch to stick. They'll just simply settle out to the bottom of the retention tank. The other thing that happens is that if you have iron bacteria in your well or iron algae as some people call it or sulfur algae you'll recognize it as a brown or a black slime and if you've set up your chlorination system properly that will all be eliminated before you reach the shuttle or the uh, flow switch housing what that means is that your shuttle will move freely If you are using a one inch housing, everything is going to be nearly identical. 
and you're going to glue your your pipe into place just like we did with the three quarter inch and obviously this one doesn't have the bonnet and the shaft and the shuttle in it. Now I'm going to say this about the three quarter inch and the one inch. The flow rate for this three quarter inch housing is nearly identical and for practical purposes is identical to the one inch housing. The three quarter inch housing will activate at a approximately one half gallon of flow per minute. The one inch housing will take approximately two gallons per minute. So even though the flow characteristics are almost identical, the one inch housing requires four times the flow and in some instances you will not get that shuttle to move up and therefore to activate the flow switch when someone is flushing a toilet or turning on a kitchen sink um, in some cases turning on the the bathroom faucet none of those in many cases will even activate this that's why in 95 plus percent of all my installations in 30 years of being in the field I use the three-quarter inch. The only time that I use the one inch is if it was required by code. So the flow characteristics, the performance characteristics of the three-quarter inch, in my opinion, are superior to the one inch. We have the one inch because we do understand that in many cases you'll need the one inch for code requirements. If I did not, but I was piping my system in one inch, <clears throat> then to maintain the look and integrity of the system, what I would do is I would take a one inch coupling and a three quarter by one slip by slip bushing, and I would glue, I would pre cut my three quarter inch piece of pipe and I would glue that in there so I'd have just enough to put into my three-quarter housing obviously you know when you actually glue these together they bottom out and you're going to get a tight fit and what the appearance is going to be is is basically that your flow switch housing is an integral part of your one inch piping there's not many people who are going to be able to tell the difference and it's not that you're trying to to deceive them you're just basically making sure that your your uh, integrity of your whole piping system is maintained and again the flow characteristics of the three quarter inch are better than those of the one inch so another thing that I found interesting in all my years of installing these is that oftentimes I was able to use an even larger pipe going through either a three-quarter inch or a one-inch housing. In fact, I had one system that was on a house that was 16,000 square feet that used two-inch piping. I simply bushed a two-inch pipe directly down to a one inch housing, came out of the one inch housing and bushed right back to a two inch pipe. The system worked great, it's still there working great. Obviously if you were using a, if you're using the flow switch inside of a, an irrigation system where you needed full flow all the time, you would want to go to a two inch flow switch sensor. But in the case of larger pipe sizes you can indeed use the smaller flow switch housing and this will give you some more versatility. If any of you have ever used a Venturi you know that uh, you have a, a very large volume of water passing through a very small opening in the pipe. So this thing um, when you bush down 
right before the housing and bush right back up to the original pipe size right after the housing, then you'll have no problems in a chlorination system or a system that uses hydrogen peroxide or pH adjustment. Now we're going to go over the use of the control box. We've already got our sensor piped up. We know that it works. We can hear the, the shuttle moving easily inside. We've got that piped up into our piping system and I'm going to set this aside. The next thing we're going to look at is the control box. The nice thing is there's about 12 feet of, of this wire in between your flow switch sensor and your control box so it's fairly easy to put this wherever you'd like to put it. For most of you you're going to be installing it indoors. Um, we have these covers which are spring loaded and they're fairly easy to take off and if you put the heel of your hand at the top of this hinged cover and push down then you can simply slide the cover out and then it's out of your way. So I'm going to do that for both of these covers and they'll be out of our way. Now what we're going to be doing is mounting our control box however we want to mount it on the wall uh, on a 4x4 four four, whatever you think. Your your electrical cord is approximately eight feet long so you can stretch it over and plug it into any grounded outlet. Once again I won't even go into that. Now on your flow switch control box you notice that you have two different colors for your duplex receptacles. The, the duplex receptacles that are on the left are the switched receptacles. These are the ones that control your pump. The receptacles that are on the right are constant. So you're going to be plugging your filter in and you're going to be plugging your softener in if that's what you're using in the system. The nice thing about this is as you're getting ready and, and starting up the system and you need to run your chemical feed pump for a little while, you can just plug it straight into the constant receptacle and that way you'll have your, your pump running. You can prime it and get all of your settings operating correctly. Then when you are finished with the installation, you simply move your uh, plug for your chemical feed pump and put it into a switched outlet. The switched outlet of course is controlled by the flow switch. And the other nice thing about it is you can put a chemical feed pump here for your chlorine and another chemical feed pump here if you felt like it for your uh, pH adjustment. Once again plug in your filter, plug in your softener, whichever way you feel like doing it. Obviously, even with these covers on, it's not made for, uh, it's not made uh, in, in accordance with electrical codes for outdoor installations with the plugs plugged in. And you will be able to purchase for an additional price what we call a bubble cover, an outdoor cover that will go over the top and you can leave the, the, the cords plugged in in the weather and only there's only a few states where we get to do things like that I think most of you have to put these things indoors so once we have our flow switch installed you're going to literally have years and years of trouble-free operation